Welcome everybody, Kelly here from KB Auto Tech and Adventure. Today we're in my shop, I got my third gen 4Runner here and we are going to do a Tundra brake upgrade, so stay tuned. The Tundra brake upgrade, what this allows us to do is upgrade to a slightly larger rotor and a bigger caliper. There's a couple different options and I'm gonna quickly explain those to you and you can uh, make the choice on which one's gonna be best for you. Here we have our factory brake. Now, if you're going to do the Tundra brake upgrade, you're going to have to make a decision right off the bat. There's two options that we can go to for larger calipers and rotors and pads if we choose. The decision you're gonna to need to make is if you wanna stick with a 16 inch rim or if you wanna go up to a 17 inch rim. Being that there's two different sizes that we can upgrade to, a 199 mil caliper or a 231 mil caliper. The 231 will not fit under most 16 inch wheels. Apparently there is a few, but I, there's not all that many. I can include a list in the comments and we'll show you uh, which ones um, apparently fit. But if you wanna go to be safe, you're gonna probably wanna go to a 17 inch wheel if you run the larger 231 caliper. Me, I'm going to stick with the 16 inch wheel. So I am going to opt for the 199 caliper. What I'm going to get an increase is I'm going to get a considerably thicker rotor and um, a little bit larger caliper. What that's going to do for me is basically it'll give it better heat tolerance and heat dissipation. So on long hill descents or continuous braking, it'll, it'll tolerate the heat and you know, it won't, uh, well, basically we're gonna end up by avoiding, you know, like rotor shake is what we're gonna end up by avoiding. So uh, I'll link the, in the description um, the sizes of the calipers. Um, but we're, for today's, we're going to do the 199 uh, mil caliper. Let's quickly review the parts that we're using today. Since I'm in Napa Auto Care location uh, at my shop here, I'm using Napa brakes today. Um, I've, you know, if you can go OEM and you wanna spend the extra cash, go for it. OEM is obviously fantastic. It's going to be the best, but I have really good luck with these ultra premium brakes. Uh, I, you know, I install quite a bit of it and it seems to do me quite well. So we have uh, basically adapter one caliper here. Reasonably nice. They come pre-painted uh, and this is a four piston caliper and it is all ready to go. There is the stamping right here. Let's see if I can turn that in the light. 13 WE. So these are the ones that we're going to be using today. I'm using the adaptive one pads. These come with a basically an inner, an inner and an outer pad, and hardware, and that's them there. Going to also be installing a set of trail gear brake lines. I may as well do those at the same time. Obviously, if your truck's getting old, you should just change your brake lines anyways, regardless of you're upgrading or not. Uh, I highly suggest changing them uh, if you're doing this at the same time. It just makes sense to do it now since you're going to be bleeding the brakes and it's not that much uh, extra cost. We've got our ultra premium rotors. Now you can see all the, the stamping on here, certified high carbon. Basically stating, I think that they, you know, they're using a less recycled materials or maybe, maybe no recycled materials. I'm not 100% unsure on that. I know in another video it was mentioned that the inside webbing or, um, or cooling fins that were a little bit, uh, you know, rough and jagged looking. I guess that was a fairly long time ago, fairly old video. You can see those ones looking pretty good. One thing you might notice as well is it looks there's at least double the amount compared to the factory rotor. Uh, I'll show you the comparison later on here in the video. If you're going to upgrade your brakes, in reality, we don't even really need to disassemble this. But for the sake of uh, showing it, we may as well show it. So we have this little retaining clip. Basically, we would pull, pull the ends out there and pull this end out right here. Then this comes out of the way. And we would take a punch and punch the pin all the way through, punch this pin all the way through, and then we could remove the pads. But the one thing that we are going to need to do is we, do, we need this line right here. So in order for us to reuse this, we wanna make sure before we remove it that this is clean this is clean, so we're gonna wire brush it, and I'm gonna hit some penetrating fluid on here. We're gonna use a flare nut wrench and crack this open. 
And speaking of which, remember we were just mentioning the brake hose. Look at this brake hose. Totally cracked. So, there we go. Definitely overdue for replacement. And a good thing that we're doing this job today, you're gonna make sure this is safe. This is a potential safety hazard where you potentially blow out a brake line and lose your brakes. And then, uh, well, you better hope it happens at a good time. For the caliper, we just have these two 17 mil bolts here. We can pull those out. I mean, this is gonna be a really simple disassembly. So let's get started. Now my rotor here is actually loose already. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, depending on where you're from, where your vehicle is, how old it is, it may be rusted, you know, basically along this edge here. And if you have to, I mean, we're not gonna save this rotor anyways. You can hit this from behind and knock, knock this off. So mine was basically already loose and good to go. Well, we have both of these rotors on the bench here. So let's take a quick comparison. So like I said, we're not gonna notice anything in the diameter. That's uh, 12 and a half inches. They're both the same. Where we're gonna notice it is in the thickness. So I'm gonna measure this out in millimeters. Measure that 28.08. Now take uh, into consideration this is a used rotor. I know nothing about it. It may have been machined, it may not. So we're just gonna take a quick measurement anyways. 21.64. So 28 and 21.64. Definitely a very big difference. I'm using the 199 caliper. If you're going to use the 231 mil caliper, it is going to be slightly longer. And this distance right here is gonna be not, it's gonna be too short, it needs to be cut. So what you'll need to do is basically mark this and mark this and use a wheel or some snips and enlarge that. Since I'm not going to uh, be increasing that, the caliper to the 231, this will bolt up in the same location and my backing plate is going to be perfectly fine. Now before we place this rotor on, we want to make sure that this surface is nice and clean, free of debris and rust, so there's nothing you know, moving in between the rotor and the hub. Mine's relatively pretty clean already. I have a thin wire brush and I'm gonna go ahead and basically just wire brush all in around this areas here. Hub surface is clean. Time to put this rotor on and get this caliper installed. Just before you do, you can put this on dry, just put your rotor on, no harm there. Some people will put a little bit of anti-seize around here to prevent that sticking or rusting like I was explaining earlier. I use uh, this Worth stuff. It's called CU800, it's a high temp copper paste and I'll just give it a light coating along there. Nothing heavy, we don't want to completely saturate this but a little bit is perfectly fine. Just a light coating, basically almost just like paint. Gonna take a quick second here and give you a couple uh, pro tips, whatever you want to call it. So we got the caliper here, and what you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is the line in and the bleeder screw. I've seen this numerous times. Um, customers have installed their own parts and brought it to me. I can't bleed my brakes, I can't bleed my brakes. And what they've done is they've put it on upside down, basically like, there, like this. So a bleeder screw to the bottom, 
and then the air is trapped in the upper portion of the caliper and you know they can bleed it forever and it'll never get a good pedal. So we want to make sure that this is to the top. And something else I've seen with rebuilt calipers over the time is you want to make sure that your bleeder screw is comes out properly, that it's free, you can blow through it, and that this is not plugged basically, or let's see I'm looking in the camera here, uh, right there. So make sure that the hole is not plugged. Uh, I've seen that where they've been painted over and same thing, they don't bleed properly and I'm not getting any air, or I'm not getting any fluid or air coming out and this is going to be the cause of it. So make sure that before we install this, we know that it's a good caliper, you know, rebuilt. It is what it is. They're not, uh, they're not always, you know, the greatest. That's why OEM is such a good choice, but you know, it's considerably more money. So you take your pick. There's nothing wrong. This is a lifetime warranty caliper, I believe. So for the price, I'm putting it on. Now what I've gone ahead and done here is apply a very light thin coating of that silicone brake lubricant to the outer edges of the pads and on the backing plates. Just a very thin light coating. Well we got that brake all assembled. Now of course we're going to do the exact same procedure on the other side. I'm not going to go ahead and show you that. Once is enough. I'm sure you got that figured out. Basically, we only have a couple small things left to do. Next, we need to bleed the brakes. I'm not gonna show you how to bleed the brakes in this video. I'm gonna link it up to a video I did, uh, brake fluid flush uh, I did on my Tacoma. It's, it's, it's exactly the same thing. It'll be a one person method. It'll show you exactly how to do that. We can go ahead, bleed all the brakes. Then we're ready for a road test. We need to set the brakes in. Let's go out and we're gonna drive it. We're gonna do probably 10 to 15 brake applications from a reasonable speed, you know, approximately uh, 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles per hour, slow it down to, uh, you know, right in around 20, 30, no big deal, set the brakes in, that's it. We're ready to enjoy our new upgraded Tundra brakes. Hopefully we have no more shaking or anything like that. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So if you liked the video, like the video. If you found any of this helpful, informative in any way, please consider subscribing to the channel. Got some great content coming up. So thanks again, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.